An inciting incident is a term from the film world. It's an event in someone's life. It could be good or bad. It could be tremendous or it could be a tragedy, but it in some way defines the character's life. It pushes the protagonist forward in their vision and their mission in life. And so we wrote this book to try to help with that moment, that kind of cross section where your dreams and your ambitions, your vision for your life comes to meet um, all the obstacles and barriers and disappointments that um, it might run into along the way. And so out of that, Inciting Incidents was born. Well, you know, we're here at Story to launch our book, Inciting Incidents, you know, a book that was kind of dreamt of and, uh, and born last year at Story 2011, and now at Story 2012, we get to launch the book. We chose these specific contributors for Inciting Incidents, actually myself and the team here in partnership with Sarah Cunningham, who is the curator on the project, they're great storytellers, and, you know, God's given them a unique story, each of them. To tell. We didn't want it to be just six people's stories. We really wanted it to invite other people into the book and into our conversation and, and really into our shared life. These contributors are able to tell their stories in a way that's so compelling that a reader can then come alongside and process those stories and then learn to heal uh, in the midst of their own stories themselves. And I hope that they'll read the book and not just read the book as an indulging in the stories of the authors who have written it, but they'll, they'll actually think about their own story and their own plot line and where they want it to go. The inciting incident I chose to write about in um, the book actually occurred not too far from uh, this room. Uh, it was about five years ago. I was living in downtown Chicago, um, and uh, I was uh, acting full time. Well, one night, it's probably two or three o'clock in the morning, um, I, uh, something just kind of jarred me out of bed. I was pacing, and I was sweating, and uh, my heart was racing, and I, I just I felt like something was something was really wrong with me. And I was so freaked out, I just went to the emergency room. Um, and it turns out that uh, I had had a panic attack. I'd never had a panic attack and um, didn't understand what was going on with me. As I started to kind of explore uh, that incident, it became clear that it was connected to um, uh, something that had occurred uh, years before. And um, the story goes that I was uh, sexually abused by um, two guys in my neighborhood when I was nine or 10 years old. And that moment set me um, on a path of addiction uh, to pornography, to sex. And um, the moment that I was experiencing uh, in my bedroom, just a couple miles from here, was my body um, and God saying, Something's wrong, we need to do something. So when uh, Sarah approached me and invited me to participate in the project, I said yes immediately. So I knew that being a part of this project, one, uh, would allow me to continue to do my own work of exploration, and then also two, um, with uh, along with this great uh, collective of other amazing authors and other amazing stories, that um, as a book would give others the permission to do that as well, to explore their, their own story. I don't know if I'd say I identified my incident. I think it identified me um, in terms of what happened to me was something I never invited or asked for. My father one night decided, in the middle of the night, um, that he was done with our family, he was done with his marriage, and he was deciding to leave. And he decided at 11.30 one night that um, that was when he wanted to be done, and so he walked out. And that was nothing that I asked for or was ready for or um, was intending on having a part of my life. Nobody wants a broken home or a broken family. So that changed the course of my life forever. His decision altered the, my whole life. And um, it's something that I can definitely identify as having a before and an after. Before I was involved in a two-parent home, we had family traditions, family vacations, um, meals together. And then after that night, I split to 
being everything apart. Then I had two homes, two traditions, two everything. I just had everything different after that moment and it changed everything about my life. So I chose to write about this in the book because um, I just feel like we can all have something to offer as a part of our story um, in terms of pain and going through something. We all have something to offer that can step into somebody else's story. Um, Henry Nouwen talks about being a wounded healer and that we don't have to be over something, we don't have to have something all together, but just talking about our process and inviting the freedom of other people to talk about their process is what I hope for. And just um, being honest about where I am and kind of where my journey has taken me, I hope that it helps other people sort of take the steps and the courage to work through their grief. Well, I've had a few inciting incidents in my life. I think the first inciting incident came when I was nine or 10 years old. I was at a birthday party for a girl that I was in school with. And as all the kids were around her as she was opening up her presents, her mother was in the back filming this entire event. Uh, we're all anticipating this moment, right? When we get to that point in the party where we get to see ourselves on television. And so the mom takes the VHS and puts it in the VCR and hits play. And when the snow cleared, you see all these beautiful children sitting around in a circle. But then I looked closer and I saw this kid who was twitching his face and clearing his throat and opening up his mouth really, really wide, shaking his head. And my first thought was, who, who is this weirdo, right? Who invited this guy? And the closer I looked, I realized much to my shame that that kid was me. And really at that, at that moment, I made a covenant with myself to never allow myself to be shamed like that again. A few months later, I was uh, diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. And so Tourette's has been a part of my life and my story uh, for quite some time now, well, well, ever since. It really spawned what I have called my imposter, uh, who I named Super Dave. And Super Dave became the star athlete, the AP student, the hard worker. I had created a false self. I created a pressed, prompt, perfect, good-looking, always on time, athletic, funny, witty person to make sure that no one would ever see my broken self again. This war between little broken Dave and the demands of Super Dave wore my physical body in the ground. And on a Sunday morning, I was scheduled to preach at a very large church in Charlotte, and that morning, my body couldn't keep up, and I had a panic attack at 2 a.m. in the morning. Found myself pinned to the bed. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't think straight. I was sweating, my skin was burning, uh, and it was at that point that I realized I needed help. A lot of times an inciting incident is something uh, you can see approaching you, uh, but a lot of times it shows up out of nowhere and you had no idea this was about to happen. That was the scenario in my case. I was at a conference in San Francisco and through a very long elaborate story um, I ended up hitting my head which sent me to the emergency room and uh, when I was there they thought I had some bleeding on the brain and when they did the MRIs and CAT scans etc uh, they learned that I had a grade 2 oligoastrocytoma brain tumor which is a glioma it's like tree branches moving through my brain like chicken wire uh, through a birthday cake uh, so it's inoperable they can't remove it I was given five to seven years left to live and and this nice brunette woman sat down and looked at me and said you have cancer and she got up and she left and I was there by myself and that was the door closing behind me and introducing me to the rest of my life. As a creative consultant I tell stories for people. I uh, help make films or I help write books. Uh, my whole life has been about telling other people's stories um, but I've always felt deep down that I had my own story that I wanted to tell um, but was to be honest really afraid and the other thing was that nothing bad ever really happened to me. I've led a very charmed life and um, 
Uh, that ended pretty quickly when they said, I've got five, seven years left to live. A story was unfolding. I didn't know the end of it. I barely knew the beginning of it or the middle of it. All I knew was that something new was happening. And um, so when the opportunity for inciting incidents came up, I knew this was the story that I needed to tell and just start to kind of figure out uh, how to document this, how to share this with people, uh, even though I don't know all the answers yet. If someone watching this or if somebody who's reading the book feels like right now they're in the middle of an inciting incident, I would say that that's a really exciting stage to be in. Oftentimes our, our, our feeling um, when we're exposing things that feel uncomfortable or are sometimes painful, our first response is to just move on. And um, I think that in that pain, God often wants to speak to us in ways that he can't. Um, when we're sort of, everything's going well. It's kind of like the theory of touching a hot stove. We don't want to touch a hot stove twice because it hurts. And so we are conditioned um, to avoid pain at all costs and to not do something again and guard against it. Um, but unfortunately, we cannot outrun pain and we cannot outrun grief. We are all going to go through these inciting incidences. We're all going to deal with um, the, these struggles. So I would encourage people to document their stories and if you feel comfortable um, sharing it with you know even just family members or close friends but if you're willing uh, there's a lot of people who, who want to hear your story share it with the world. And so be who you are not who you think you should be. Be your broken pathetic self and that's who we are and then allow Jesus to come in that and to take over that and to shape and mold and bring beauty from those ashes. And then your life, as Paul says, is Christ. And for you to die is gain. That's the gospel. And that's what an inciting incident will lead you to.